How to stand out against competition. Give me one second and I will tell you. Happy Thursday. I am doing pretty good today. I have been listening to some good podcasts. Been doing a little reading. Doing some good meditation practices. So, where am I at with everything? Okay, my YouTube channel is doing alright. Um, I've got like 62 videos uploaded now. And I think that I have like almost a quarter million views. You know, um, so that's pretty promising. So I feel good about that. I need to double down on finding some sponsors and converting it into a podcast for like Spotify and Apple. I think that's where it would probably be the best content because so you don't have to like look at me, but you can listen to what I'm saying and maybe you can like speed it up. Um, so yeah, so that's what I'm thinking about doing there. Um, I've also got some house showings today. I'm excited about that. Um, but I've been kind of nervous lately because I'm thinking I might need to take some days off from my show and maybe like go out and meet some people, like do some volunteer work or uh, try to find some like groups to be a part of because I'm nervous about when I go to, I'm not nervous, but when I go to somewhere, I want to make sure that like I'm a value add and I've got books that we can publish and I've got lawsuits that we can work on and... So I've got like a fat boy pipeline for the team, whatever team I get, I can be a part of, but, and I've got tons of international connections, which is a big deal, but I don't have much like hometown connections, I guess you could say, but I don't know. Hopefully that people won't think that that's that big a deal. Um, but you know, I want to be like well-rounded across the board. So yeah. Okay, so how to stand out against competitors. Okay, first I'll say the more products or services you're selling, I feel like the more solutions you can sell. Um, I know a lot of people say that the riches are in the niches, and I don't think that's wrong per se. I think picking a niche is good if you're doing something like affiliate marketing. I feel like picking a niche is good if you're thinking a little bit smaller, but if you're trying to build a monopoly, I don't necessarily think the riches are in the niches. I think it's a lot easier to get to zero to one if you pick a niche, but I feel like if you wanna be like rich as fuck, then I don't think a niche, I think if you pick a niche, then you need to have a plan to expand out of that niche into more, like look at freaking Richard Branson, the Virgin Group, how many businesses is that? And like, if they're trying to win a client, we'll be like, okay, we'll do this for you. And we can offer all these other solutions with all these other business that we have, you know? So look at it from that perspective or Amazon, for example. Okay. Well, what's their niche? <laughs> exactly. Okay. So, okay. So how to stand out against competitors. Okay. So like I said, and then other things you can do, like, like offer in-house financing. Okay. And you know, certain prospects might be like on the verge of getting credit approved. And if you're doing in-house financing, you can make sure that they get approved, you know? Um, or if you're in the insurance industry, you know, why are you only selling auto insurance? Why aren't you selling home insurance? Why aren't you selling, why are you only selling fucking one insurance? You're a fucking insurance company, you know? Um, so that's my take on the matter. Um, so what I used to do to stand out against competitors, I would also sell a solution selling solar. Okay. Um, and I would say meet, like put like a, together, like a team of like the whole company and be like, oh, what, what can we offer that our competitors aren't offering? You know, like what can we do that they can't do? Okay. So what I would do is, okay. So brief run. Okay. I told you guys in a previous episode about that company, Meraki scumbags. Okay. They would sell all these little tiny solar systems, which screwed people over. It would give them two, like $300 power bills and the net metering program is like the only benefit of solar. And what it does is it allows you to get power and any excess power that your panels generate, it sends it back to the grid and then that they FPL credits your account, you know, for giving them free power from your panels. Um, and you know, like the other good solar companies, I guess like halfway decent solar companies, I'm not gonna say good, but they would sell solar systems at 100% offset, which wasn't bad, but it would still leave them with like a, you know, 
like prospects would still have like a twenty dollar a month power bill, and if they did, did a like kept the lights on a little extra or something, you know, or is like the middle of the summer, you know, they're gonna have to pay, you know, they might have a fifty dollar power bill occasionally. And so what I would do is on every solar system that I would design, I would make it to it was one twelve to one fifteen percent offset, so that one hundred percent eliminate their FPL bill entirely. You know, and I know they start some other companies started doing that uh, after I like quit dot com and started dot net. I realized I was like, it's about time these freaking jackasses started doing that. Um, so that was one thing I used to do to like stand out against competitors, you know, because like we go into competitive deals and everybody's offering. OK, so they've got one person offering like a shitty, tiny little tier one system. Um, trying to screw people over and then I'm offering like this big ass system at like a cheap, like the same price or not cheaper, you know? Um, so it's about knowing your product too. The better that you know what you're selling, the better that you can find ways to identify pain points for your prospects. So yeah, I feel like that's pretty good advice. Uh, the next thing I'm going to talk about, I had some like funny questions earlier, but I'm feeling like I'm pretty doing pretty good on this video. Um, okay. So next question. Okay. For creating proposals or selling, presenting proposals we'll get into. Okay. So I'll stick on the solar since I'm on the solar or it could be, uh, okay. So when I put together a solar proposal, you know, it would be numbers of pages, you know, and it would be, I would do hard copies because I feel like when you're going into someone's house, it's always good to have like a hard copy, um, to sell. And what I would do is at the top of the proposal, I would put, say it was a, it was an $80,000 project. I would put retail price and I would put like one thirty nine ninety nine nine ninety nine. So like I'd put like 140 grand as the retail price. So they see that number, they're like, fuck. And I'd be like, yeah, that's the retail price. But if you see the actual price is like 79,888, you know? So they see that first number and they're like, wow, that's way too expensive. But then they see, so then they see the second number, like the actual price of the project, as opposed to like the first number that they see. Um, it makes it easier for them to move forward, you know? So that'd be my advice on that. I've heard her Mosey talk about that too. Also, it's like where he talks about like, when he's selling, I guess, like, gym memberships or whatever, he talks about, like, uh, you know, brace yourself, it's really expensive, and then, you know, kids them with, like, a lower price, but, but, yeah, what I would do is, so I'd mark down, you know, like, retail price, and then I'd, like, show, like, a high-ass number, and then I'd show actual price, you know, so, that is my advice on presenting proposals, and I mean, obviously that can work in any industry, anything, anytime you're selling like a product, you know? Um, okay. So next we will go, how can people, how can people and businesses ensure security of data in an age of digital transformation? I would say go with cloud computing and I guess I'll just end with this one. So, okay, so this is just like a funny question. So what would you do if you would win the lottery? If I won the lottery, I would probably put, you know, like a shit ton of it in savings and then get together with some really smart people and make a plan on how we would make a shit ton of money off of it. Um, yeah. So I didn't really put a whole lot of time into thinking about that. So, so yeah, um, other than that, I'm considering going to the bookstore today. I uh, haven't hundred percent decided, but, uh, yeah. So I hope you guys got something from this episode and remember that I love you and that you can be what you will to be.